I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today, we're going to work on building a night sky star chart star map using Inkscape in an open source platform called Stellarium. And these are two examples. Now, you can use any date you want. This is the date that I met my wife and where I met her. So this is the, the star view of the night sky. The day, this is either the day we met or the day we first talked on the phone. <laughs> either way, it's a very important date, but you can choose any date. You can choose the date of uh, birth of a child, some uh, your wedding date, anniversary, anything you want, but let's get started. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna make this white box with the black night sky, but using the steps, you can make it in blue or red or anything. So go ahead and choose your rectangle tool and pull a rectangle out and we don't need it to be red. So on fill, we'll go to, let's make it something just nice and neutral for now so we can find it. I do wanna make some exact dimensions. You can make it any dimension you want, but if you wanna follow along, I have it set, I have my selector tool up in width. I want 450, I'm on millimeters. And then for height, I want 600, enter. And all that did was create the rectangle we want. We want. So then choose your circle and ellipse tool. And then if you hold shift and control together when you pull it out, can't see it that well, let's change that fill to something else, red. And this you can kind of eyeball, so maybe a little bigger. If you hold shift and control, it keeps it even. And I like it like that. Let's just make this one more like a darker. And I don't need a stroke on that. So if you go to stroke and then X that out. There was a yellow stroke if you couldn't see it. All right, now I want to duplicate this because I'm going to use it for something to cut out my stars. And then just for, for speed, I'm going to choose my edit text. And then we'll just write the night sky. You can do night sky or the day we met or something like that. I'm on Arial, everyone has that font, but maybe we'll go with heavy, just so it looks better. And then this is a trick to, usually font is always just normally spaced, the kerning is just default. But I like to go, if you go back to your um, font, I wanna go negative on the kern, so I'm gonna go negative 15, just to like pull it together, just think it looks better. And then we'll shrink that. If you hold shift and control again, it'll stay in, um, ratio, the ratio will stay the same. And I, everyone else, if you look on Etsy, everyone's got it centered. I like it on the side, but put it in the center. If you want the center, put it in the side. I'm going on the side. And then we'll come back at the end for the rest of the font because no one came here to, to learn how to type. We came to build a star chart in Inkscape, but we must leave Inkscape. This is stellarium.org. And I just happen to have it right here. So now this is an open source platform. It's like a free planetarium. And then it's actually pulling data from like the European Space Agency, some from NASA. And so thank you very much Stellarium for putting this together. Now you're gonna wanna click on try the web version. I already have it queued up. I have it set to Boston. So it might actually try to pull data from wherever you are, but I've got Boston right now. This is not the Boston skyline, but you know, it's just kind of a, a default. And if you scroll around, it's pretty cool. It shows you, so supposedly this is exactly the stars if it wasn't a cloudy, snowy night. Uh, so if you wanna have fun with this outside of this project, you can go here and you know learn what stars are what. But now we wanna, we're wanna we gonna try to get rid of some of this information. All I'm trying to pull is the actual stars so we don't have to chart it ourselves in Inkscape. Uh, here you go, you can put the constellations up there. Nice, uh, this is constellation art. So that's what Hercules looks like. This is it's the imagination at work, but we don't need any of that. Atmosphere, I don't want that. We made it a little darker. And then what's this landscape? We're going into space now. I don't want my grid and I don't need deep sky objects. Also go to view settings. You gotta get rid of the Milky Way cause that's gonna mess up the file. And then DSS, that's a mystery. Just unclick it, so close. All right, so now this gives you the night sky, a little bit less noise in there, but we need to change the date. So the bottom right-hand corner, click on here, there's a timeline, and then go to whatever date you're gonna be uh, signifying on this piece of art. So I have 2011, then I'm going to October 21st, allegedly. There we go. When you get your date punched in, click off of the timeline. And then now here's where the artistic license comes in. Cause this is the actual night sky. Look at this, there's Jupiter. Uh, for the night I met my wife, which is pretty interesting. But then the center point is something called Betelgeuse. This looks like it's Orion. There it is, that's Orion. So some star in the Orion constellation named Betelgeuse. So I don't really want that as my centerpiece. So I'm gonna scroll around someplace else. 
Actually, I'll scroll a little bit. So if you, if you scroll up quite a bit, you get more stars. So now we wanted to decide. We want a giant Jupiter. I don't want a big blob in my... just went upside down. I'm, I'm going all over the place. There's the sun. <laughs> Atmosphere. Landscape. Okay, so that's looking through the planet Earth. We, we don't need this. Let's just go back in the sky. I like it. Kind of like... I want Jupiter in there. This looks good to me. So then right click and then save image as and it was just downloaded down here. Thank you, Stellarium, and we're gonna go back into Inkscape. All right, so I looked at it off camera, and it's a very small file, so I'm dragging it back into my Inkscape work area, and then I have it on embed the link from file, and then rendering, I'm gonna go with smooth for optimized quality, okay. Let's see what we got here. I'm gonna zoom in and see, that's pretty awesome. This is a file, this is a PNG file, so I can't work with it like this. I have to make it into a vector. To do that, you have to have your item selected, go to Path, Trace Bitmap, and you'll get a menu, and this is how we're gonna make the stars come out of the background here. So on single scan, brightness cutoff, threshold 0.45, we actually wanna click Invert, because I'm trying to grab the stars, not the darkness, then update. So the stars are going to be black for now, but we're going to change them back. I need way more stars than that. So let's go to 0.15. Update. And that gave us more. So let's see what happens with that. So push OK. Ooh, this, this looks nasty, but that's actually what it's supposed to look like. Just if we pull away, see what I just did? I'm pulling my stars away, and that is exactly what you want. This is the source file, you can delete that. But look what we have here, this is awesome data. This is the actual stars, and we're gonna flip them back white. And we don't need the word. So let me show you how to get the words out of there. Trace bitmap created this vector file. So this one right here, edit paths by nodes. I'm gonna click on that, and it just makes a whole bunch of nodes are being shown, and we can, we can manipulate these. So I'll zoom in, so shift, Sorry, control and zoom in and see how I have Jupiter there. If you cl click on shift and then make a, a box around just the Jupiter nodes, then delete that. Then zoom out and go find, where's the other one we had in there? This is a word, Capella. Don't need that word. And then what do we have up here? There was one more word. I thought we got rid of Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice just wants to be part of my... My, my love story. Okay, bye. Before we move on, I wanna show you now, if you wanna get real nitty gritty. Now, I, my stars are circles, and I think that looks great, but if you wanna go real detailed, choose the Bezier pen, pen, and you can draw, just hold shift and it'll make hard angles. You can draw diamonds over some of the larger, see that? Just if you, if you wanna have um, more sharp angles, not just the circles. But for this, let's not do that. I'll just do undo to get rid of it. So now it's time to actually put the stars into the star field. So let's grab, this is gonna be the, the circle we do for our clip, and then, then we'll change it white. So first let's put it where we want it. I want Jupiter in it. And actually, I, I feel like these little stars need some more uh, weight to them. So to do that, click on any of your stars, make sure you're in your star field, and then you can change the stroke. So the stroke will have it present. And if it was set to a different color, this will, you can see what we just did. So this would be the normal star with no stroke. And then if we add the stroke, now I don't want it to be red, but just so you can see it. So let's make it, it has to be black for now. We're gonna flip it white at the end. So now we have, what, how much do we add? 0. 0.6, let's add a little bit more. So again, just so, so you see what we're doing, this is the red. Now I'm gonna add it, I'll do 1.0. Just enough, a little touch. So then back to stroke paint. You could keep it a mismatch for now, but for simplicity, I want Jupiter in my field, but I don't need it to be enormous. So I'm gonna make my area bigger. So that'll just make Jupiter look smaller, collect some more stars while we're at it. And now to clip the circle out of the full star field, select the circle, hold shift and select your stars, then go to object, clip, set. And there we go, look at that. We can slide this over. I can now make this background black. So if it's on fill, change that to black. Now I can make my stars white. And I, I intended to have it be perfectly proportioned and just clip it with the same size circle. 
but when I made the circle bigger, then my star field came bigger, but you get the picture. There's always some leeway in art, but let's zoom in. That's, that looks awesome. So I got Jupiter. That's the, that is the real night sky that I met my wife. It, we were set up by a friend, a common friend, and we're not done though. We're not done. But first I can change my background so that you see you can go anywhere you want, but I'll go slightly off white, but I want to make, I want to make this thing right here, this like blue grid. And if you go back to st uh, Stellarium, they call it, I'm not going to pronounce that. It's called, it's called the space grid. And I think it, it adds a nice touch. So let's make it right now. Inkscape has a, a built-in tool that will almost do the whole thing for you. So go to Filt, uh, extensions, render, grids, polar grid. And then this menu, the defaults on the top, I'll just read them down, 3.6, none, 18, 24. I didn't touch those. But for major circular divisions, I chose 8. For the spacing, I chose 50. And then the subdivisions, I had um, 2 look good. We'll try 3, see what happens with that. And then live preview, might take a second to come up. I'll just push apply. It'll, it'll pop up. There it is. Okay, close. And then we can play with this. Quick warning, there's a little bit of heavy lifting, not for us, but for Inkscape. So just make sure you save, just save wherever you're at because I don't want it to crash on you when we got this far. All right, so click on your item, go to path, path effects. And this should, this should come up in your menu bar here, path effects, go to plus. And then we want the one that says lattice deformation. And what it's gonna do is we're gonna bend it so it's more spherical. You want to click on mirror movements in horizontal and then mirror movements in vertical and then don't click on use only perimeter. So nothing's going to happen until you choose the edit and select nodes. And then what I've learned is don't mess around with these on the interior, but you can start with the middle one just to pull it up a little bit. And then you can go to the corner, maybe pull that in. It makes it more sphere. And then you can choose, just play with it, but don't, don't mess around with these on the corners. I'll just show you. That one's okay. But then these sideways ones, they warp it. So just don't touch, just don't touch the sideways ones. I'm gonna take out the horizontal and vertical. Now I'm gonna go just singular. You'll see that it's a little bit different. I'll just zoom in. Actually, this looks pretty good. This is this is almost perfect. So we can go to the last step here. So I wanna go back to path and then path effects, or if it's actually over here, you can go to the plus sign. And then we'll go to dashed stroke. And then this will give us, a, eh, that's not too bad there. I'm just trying to give it some more like, um, like a staccato choppiness. I don't want linear lines on our little space grid. And now playing with this before, the number of dashes I liked the best was nine. And then I also thought it looked better if you uncheck the third box, unified dashes. And that's, that's what I was looking for. And now we can really tie it all together so I'm going to go get another piece of the sky, the night sky. So you see how I have it selected? Here, I'll just show you. I've just selected the, the circle. I'm going to control D. That duplicates it. I'm going to use this shape to clip my grid. So the grid can now, let's change the color so we can see it better. So we'll go to stroke. Red is good. And then I need to put it on top so I can see what I'm doing. So let's lower this down. Pretty cool. I will take it there. And then you wanna put the circle on top. So it, whichever one's on top does the clipping. So I have to raise it back up and then select on the grid object clip set. And there it is. Let's put it on top of our field. It's not gonna be red. You could, I guess, maybe for Valentine's Day, but this will look better when it's a, <laughs> it looks terrible, like it looks like the Death Star. I find that when you're trying to maneuver it, it's gonna to try to land on, it's gonna to snap to the stars. So unclick the enable snapping. So this is enable snapping for percentage. This is enable snapping to nodes, paths, and handles. So then you can maneuver it more freely and then now that I'm looking at it in place, I think the stroke is too thick. So I'm gonna go down to like 
Yeah, that's good. And then go to stroke paint, and then you can make that grid white. Not too bright, somewhere in the middle. And there you go, there's your star chart. Let's put a drop shadow on the board. So filters, shadows and glows, drop shadow. Presets okay, apply. And there it is, there is your star chart, your star map made with Inkscape and Stellarium. Thanks again for the data. And you can change the color, you can change the date, location, anywhere you want. There's the blue and then the black we had before, and the new one with the night. I've met my wife. So thanks and have fun with it.